Welcome back to Creative Piano Academy with me, Joseph Saikora, where I show you simple techniques to get better at the piano. And today, finally, we are starting the Boogie Woogie. Kind of sounds like this. Now, I must warn you, the Boogie Woogie is incredibly addictive. So if you've got an addictive personality, you better stop this video right now. I'm only joking, there's no need to stop the video. So I've got three left hand Boogie Woogie patterns for you today. Should set us up nicely for some future videos where we can explore lots of other stuff. Also, make sure you watch through to the end of the video because I've got a bit of a surprise for you. You're gonna love it, especially if you like this video. So, introduction. Two things before we get started, subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit that little bell thingy next to it so you know when your next piano lesson's available. Second, go to creativepianoacademy.com where you can grab the best adult piano practice plan so you know how and what to practice when you sit in front of that piano. Now, let's get going. So pattern number one, this is probably the most important pattern for you to learn. This is like the core, the foundation, of, um, and you can build other patterns from this, but really I want you to get used to this one first. So get your left hand into a C power chord position. <laughs> I should get a t-shirt, shouldn't I, that just says power chord. We've got our power chord position here, look. And the best place to play this, I think, is two octaves below middle C. It sounds quite bluesy down here, but you can play it anywhere, you know, it'll work, um, and you, you know, just develop your skills anywhere on the piano, really. Uh, but I'm going to show you it down here. So we've got our little finger, finger five on the C, and our little thumb, finger one, on the G, like this. Now, there's a few stages to learn this. First of all, I want you to just get used to moving between that position, which is the power chord position, and this position here. So the little finger stays where it is on the C, and our thumb moves between the G and the A, like this. And I should point out that we're in the key of C here. Okay. So we just move between them. So you need to get used to that movement to make sure that uh, you can move comfortably between them. You know, we don't want any of this going on or this going on or that, you know, we want to be able to move nice and um, smoothly and confidently between those two positions, okay? Now, this is where things get a little bit more interesting. What you're gonna do is play each chord, each power chord twice. So we get this. Okay. Now, this is what's called playing it straight. Now, this is more like rock and roll style. Because um, if I play, if I speed that up a little bit, you know, it sounds like this. It's a very valid left hand pattern is that as it is. But when we talk about boogie woogie, what we more associate with that is a shuffle rhythm, okay? So whereas before our count was like one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and, we're going to extend those little ands. So instead of being straight, we get this one and two and three and four and. And this is like adding a shuffle in, yeah? So one and two and three and four and, okay? And we play it, one, and two, and three, and four, and, okay? So you see how the first strike is extended, one, and two, and three, and four, and. And the, the movement, the movement between the pans comes on the fast bit, all right? When I teach this, uh, mainly to uh, my beginners, or when they're first starting to learn the blues, we end up with this going on. Because it's easier to move on that, um, on the on the longer bit, but you need to move on the shorter bit like this. Okay? So what you need to do is try and get used to that shuffled rhythm and comfortably move between that those two patterns. You can start off really nice and slowly, and then when you get used to it, try and add a bit of speed in. Now, when you do add a bit of speed in, I just want to actually show you something. I'm just Let me just grab another camera, just one second. Hang on. So what I want you to be aware of here is when we start speeding this up, I don't want you to be stiff like this. Because if you're stiff, you'll wear out those muscles very, very quickly. You want to be nice and relaxed from the shoulder and it wants to hinge from the wrist. Very little wrist action, uh, sorry, very little arm action here, okay? So when we move in between them, you see how it's floppy, it's relaxed, and I'm just sort of collapsing down onto this, onto the keys like this, okay? The point is there's no tension, so just bear that in mind, okay? Okay. 
this is how you can develop some speed. So that is pattern one, guys. It's the core boogie woogie pattern. You need to get used to the uh, rela relaxation, rhythm, and get comfortable with it. Now, before we move on to the other patterns, there's something I really need to go over, and that is the 12 bar blues, okay? All the 12 bar blues is, is as you might have guessed, it's a 12 bar pattern, and it just tells you which positions or which chords you need to play in order to comply with the 12 bar blues. There's lots of variations of the 12 bar blues, but I'm gonna show you the basic, most common version right now. So the 12 bar blues goes like this. We've got chord one for four bars, okay? So that'll be the C position here. Uh, so we're going to play this for four bars. One, two, three, four. That's one bar. Two, two, three, four. Three, two, three, four. Four, two, three, four. Now, we move on to chord four, okay? Which is in the key of C, F. So we move this position here to the F position, and we just do exactly the same. Okay, so we've got the F and the C and the F and the D. That's our position. And we play that for two bars like this. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. And then we go back to chord one, which is the C position, for two more bars. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Now we move to chord five for one bar, which is this G here. And by the way, just for those of you that don't know, we can we can we know what the chord five is because we count up from the bottom one, two, three, four, five, like this. Okay, so this is our our fifth um, fifth chord, and we're going to play this for one bar. So that's one, two, three, four, down to the F for another one bar. One, two, three, four, and then down to C for uh, to finish off for two more bars. Two, two three, four, and then the whole thing repeats, okay? So I'll put that all together for you and I'll count along. So we've got chord one, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, up to chord four, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, back to chord one for two bars, one, two, three, four, to G for a bar, F for a bar, back to C for a bar. Boom, then we start again, right there. Okay, so that's the 12 bar blues. So, what, so once you've got used to that left hand pattern, you can plug that into the 12 bar blues and all of a sudden you've got some proper boogie woogie kind of music going on. Sounds really good. Now onto pattern number two. Remember the first pattern was the core, it was the foundation. So make sure you get used to that first. With pattern number two, um, I'll, just, I'll play it for you first. It sounds like this. Okay, I'll swung. Okay, so we're just taking that shuffle, that, that concept a little bit further, adding a little bit more variety in there. So, how do we play this? Get our little finger onto the C and play it twice. One and. I'll show you, um, I'll, I'll show you it straight first and then we'll add the shuffle in. So one and, and then third finger onto the E flat and then up to the E like this. So we get this one and, two and. So you see how we're just moving that third finger from the E flat to the E. One and, two and. Okay, then our thumb, our fifth finger, comes to the G and we'll play that twice. Our power chord twice. So we get this. One and two and three and. And to finish it off, four and. So we move up to the A and back to the G. So we get this. One and two and three and four and. Okay? The F position, very similar. We, there's no real difference in, in the movement that you make here. You're just, uh, you're just moving it from this position up to this position. So we get F, F, A flat, A, C, C, D, C, okay? Um, and the G position, same again. G, G, B flat, B, D, D, E, D, okay? So for those positions, position. Um, so that's the pattern with those three positions. Let's now add the shuffle in. This this might be a little bit harder for you, um, but it's, this is now adding in the boogie woogie. So remember, we elongated or we extended that first uh, that first beat. So instead of one and two and, we're going one and two and, okay? So if we apply that, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and 
okay? Remember, nice relaxed wrist. So that's the full two bar blues. Now, one little thing that you might have noticed, and to finish off with, you might notice that on this first beat, I'm adding in that G at the top. So I'm kind of technically doing this. Sometimes. Um, that's absolutely fine. It's just a variation on it. It's just a different way to play it. For now, just get used to this one. I think that's slightly better because it does bring that sort of bluesy bum ba dum ba dum ba dum ba dum ba dum ba dum You can hear that really nice blues motif going through it. Now, on to pattern number three. So this is this is like this to me sounds like proper blues. I don't know why, but it just sounds like it's out the 20s, you know, when blues was just kicking off. And it's based around this, you'll have probably heard this, it's based around this um blues blues sort of bass melody like this. You might have heard that before. Okay, so how do we build that into our pattern? There's a few extra little things to think about here, but we'll, we'll come on to that in a second. So I'll just show you the pattern to start with. We want to start off with our C like this twice. One and, okay? Then we bring in the E for twice. Then we bring in the G for twice. And then we bring in the A twice, okay? Now that's technically a full bar. So we get this, one and two and three and four and. And now to finish it off, because this is a two bar phrase, it's not a one bar phrase, it's a two bar phrase. To finish it off, we move up to the B. So this is actually quite a nice little stretch for you. And it's really good to get used to. So be careful here, not to strike that B, uh, the D as well here. We wanna try and get a nice clean C and B flat. Okay, and then we simply just move back down those notes. Okay, so we're taking the whole thing and just sort of flipping it round. So that sounds like this. Okay, now if we play that shuffled, remember instead of one, uh, one and two and, we're going one and two and, okay? Elongating that first, that first strike. So it sounds like this, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and, okay? So, practice that to start with. Now, if you remember in the 12 bar blues, we have certain bars that only last for one bar, okay? Or certain chords that only last for one bar. So what do we do there? Well, I'll show you this one. So for instance, G is the perfect example of where we only stick around for one bar, not two bars. So to do that, all we wanna do so it's the same pattern, start off with G's and then B's and then D's like this, but then we just move up to the E and then back to the D, okay? So that's a one bar phrase. Now shuffled, okay? So when we get to our one bar phrases, that's what we can do. So I did jump to that to that G just now, so I'll show you it in the different positions. And um, we've got, this is the this is the C position, as we go up, which is chord one. And then for the F position, which is chord four. Up to the B, uh, E flat, back to the D, C, A, okay? So again, it's just the same, you know, we don't need to really change much here. And then with the G, we've got our new pan. And then, towards the end of the 12 bar blues, we've got the F, which only lasts for one bar. Okay? And then back to the C for two bars to finish off. Now, you might be feeling a little bit overwhelmed there. There's a, I've thrown a lot at you with those different bars, and there's one bar here, two bars there, and it's like, oh, so I'm gonna um, put everything together. I'm gonna play it nice and slowly. I'm gonna play you a full 12 bar blues with that third pattern, so you can either play along or just study exactly what I'm doing. So, start off on bar one. One. Two. Three. Four. Up to the F. One. Two. Back to the C. 
two. Up to the G, one. To the F for one. And then back to C for two. So that's the full 12 bar blues using pattern number three. So to quickly recap, pattern number one, moving between these two positions. Pattern number two. And pattern number three. Okay, and there we go. Those are those three patterns. So try and get used to them, especially pattern one. They will be the foundation of quite a few extra videos I've got planned, so make sure you get used to that. Now I did say at the beginning of this video that I had a bit of a surprise for you. So if you click the link in the cards up here, or you check the information box down below, you can grab yourself a copy of an extra video I've put together for you covering a right hand pattern, a basic right hand pattern that you can add to these left hand patterns. It's a very detailed video, it goes over it step by step, and it's the same pattern I show my students when I'm first starting them off on the boogie woogie to just get that hand coordination going because hand, hand coordination or hand independence is a killer for this okay it takes some real work to try and get that get that left hand keeping constant and getting the right hand going as well so check out that video if you want a really nice impressive sounding right hand pattern that you can add in that is it from me today guys like the video if you liked it subscribe to the channel and i will see you i will see you in the next video